our music group. And I'm um, very thankful for everybody coming out. I'd like to introduce Dr. Ben Chavis from the Hip Hop Summit Action Network. Thank you. Good morning. Um, this is another great day in the evolution of hip hop. I'm here today on behalf of the Hip Hop Summit Action Network, which is the largest national coalition of hip hop artists and recording industry executives in the United States. We're very pleased to be here on this momentous day uh, to witness uh, the fulfillment of a commitment uh, that was made and in a few minutes, well, in a few seconds, the principals will be here as we discuss uh, not only the evolution of hip hop, but what does this announcement mean today? Uh, and it has significance not only for one label, but for the totality of hip hop and for the broader community. As you know, hip hop is a global cultural phenomenon uh, that stretches beyond the United States of America. Hip hop music, hip hop culture has now encompassed the whole globe. And so the symbols that we use, the names that we use, um, the images that we broadcast and forecast are very important to us. And they do have great meaning. And so today is another um, a crossroads, so to speak, but it's about the ongoing evolution of hip hop. I'm very pleased Russell Simmons is here, the chairman of the Hip Hop Summit Action Network, and he will bring uh, Brother Irv and others who will speak to the point of today's announcement. Uh, one thing I would like to say before um, we take your questions, uh, I will introduce Russell Simmons, Russell will introduce Irv, and then we will um, take your questions. Uh, we all know that you've been here for a while. We want to entertain your questions, but we also want to stay focused on the point of this announcement, its significance, and its meaning. And you probably have questions that um, uh, may not be on point. We'll entertain those questions, but if they go too far off point, then we're going to try to get to the questions for the real purpose why we're here. All right? Thank you so much for coming, and we'll be beginning in just a second. I want to thank Leo Korn for um, introducing me. Alan Def Jam has been one of the strong supporters uh, of the Hip Hop Summit Action Network, and we're very pleased to uh, be co-sponsoring this joint announcement today. Uh, we have been involved in the um, peace process uh, between Ja Rule and 50 Cent, which is also an ongoing um, process. And uh, part of what we're doing today is a part of that ongoing process. Uh, so this is another moment from our perspective uh, to continue to celebrate uh, the evolution of hip hop culture and hip hop music. We were all just together on another floor so it took uh, time for everybody to get the elevators up to this particular floor. So just bear with us a moment. At this time, uh, I'm pleased to uh, bring to the podium a man whose name is synonymous uh, with hip hop. He's known as the uh, godfather of hip hop. Uh, Business Week referred to him as the CEO of hip hop. You all know him. He needs no real introduction. His name personifies why we're here. Let's welcome Jeff. Russell Simmons. Okay. Good morning. I think that uh, today is a, a good day. Um, I was saying earlier that we're all on a path to, all of us, including the hip-hop community, is on a path to, to a relationship with something better, always. But today especially is a day that we can point to as when we take a big step. Our self-image is always critical uh, in helping determine our actions. 
And so today, uh, I'm here in support of the members of the Murder Incorporated Company and their, and their decision to make a very important announcement to you. And so I'm here as a, uh, in official capacity as a member of the Hip Hop Summit and uh, as a friend of, of Irv, who I've known to, comes from the same neighborhood I come from, come from the same struggle that I come from, and he's come through uh, shining. And so I'm here supporting him, I'm proud of him, and I'm here to introduce him. Uh, is, is Irv right there? That's how you bring him right out. I saw Ja and Ashanti and some of the other members of the company are here as well. Irv? Yeah. I didn't know we were here. I, I was late. I didn't know. Irv. Wow. Ja Rule, Ashanti. Get settled in. Wow. I like to uh, <coughs> thank everybody for coming down for this uh, important announcement. You know, it's a big day in hip hop. It's a big day for me, it's a big day for my label. And uh, the announcement is, I just saved a bunch of money on my car insurance. <laughs> 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 to do that just to break the mood and get everybody in a uh, a happier state and I, I wanted to do that also to show everybody contrast to what people think about me and my label and stuff like that that up here first and foremost with me Josh Shanti my brother Russell dr. Ben brother Gary we're good people you got to stay down we're very good people and that's what I wanted to drive home <coughs> today, that up here is good people. And although a lot of things over the past year has been said about us and about the label, about the artists, up here is good people. So I want to get into uh, exactly why we're here today, and that is the changing of the name of my record label from Murder Rank Records to the ink records. So if you give me a minute, I'm gonna go and I'm trying to explain it so everyone gets it because I hate being misunderstood. I feel a lot of times in my career I've been misunderstood. So I'm gonna try to explain it to the best of my ability so everyone could get what I'm trying to uh, do here, which is lead into a, a more positive, positive way. I'm growing up, we changing. We want to get to a positive way. So I'm going to start by saying uh, after I got my a &R job with Leo at Def Jam and I, I helped sign Jay and worked on Jay's album and, and uh, signed X and did his album and it was a, a, a lot of success and it was time to do Jai's album. 
you know, I went hard to get my uh, joint venture. <laughs> went hard to get my joint venture with, with Leo and Russell and Def Jam. So at that time, it was time for me to decide the name of my record label. Me being the young, and at, at, at that time, I was really, by any means necessary, I wasn't thinking about nothing. All I wanted to do was be hot. And, and I wanted to shock people, and I wanted people to remember. So I was trying to think of a name, a bunch of names came down. I remember one time we was thinking of Lockdown, remember that? Lockdown, lockdown. If, it was, if you listen to that record called Gangsta Shit, it was on Clue's album, Ja Says Lockdown, because that was a potential uh, name of, of the record label before Murder Rink. But then I was watching Arts and Entertainment, and this is, a, this is the exact story. Some of you may have heard it before, some of you might not have heard it before. I was watching Austin Entertainment. They was doing a uh, Gangster Week. You know, I I like watching that stuff. No particular reason. Just like everybody else would like to watch it. And they did a special on Murder Incorporated, which was a, a crew of hitmen that put out contract hits and they put out hits. And uh, the name Murder Rink came across the screen, and then it got riddled with bullets. And it was like. As crazy as that it sounds that the name Murder Rink is like God said, that's your name. You know what I'm saying? It's like a, a, the light bulb went over my head. And I was like, wow. And then the play on words was, 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 really, was really great to me because Murder Rink put out hits. And in the record business, you try and make a hit record. So I was like, yeah, we Murder Rink and we're going to put out hits. And yeah, and I knew people would be like, Murder Rink. And it's, it's a shocking name, but I like that because I knew they would remember it. And then with Murder Inc., we, I said, you know, how, how with Bad Boy, they called uh, their artists, they would go, I'm a bad boy. Death Row, they'd be like, I'm a Death Row inmate. And they was the two labels that was popping right then. So I was like, yeah, Murder, Murder Inc., and, you know, my, my artists would be called murderers. And, you know, we'll say it's murder and everything like that. And I get on the phone with John. He's like, yeah, that's hot. Let's go. And that's exactly how the name would start up. Now... I didn't really care at that time about what repercussions or whatever. The first, the first uh, album that I released was this called Irv Gotti Presents the Murderers. And that's when I started to see from then, which was like five, six years ago, I, I, I seen from then the, the ramifications of, of a label being called Murder Rink and the artist being called Murderers because every chain store wouldn't put me in the front. They said, we're not carrying this. We're going to put it in the back. We can't say, you can't say murder rank and everything like that. I start seeing it at award shows and stuff because people would cringe at saying, you know, the Ja Rule murder rank recording, other day, you know, I would have to be in there pressing them to say it. And I start seeing the, what, what the caliber, what the name was doing and how people was taken to it. Now, over the course of the years and stuff like that, it seems as though it seems as though no one is really looking at the talent that's up here more so than that damn word, murder. You know, we're a group of people up here and we made a lot of clean, wholesome, big records. You know what I'm saying? We made a lot of big records, put it on me, from the put it on me to the foolish to the I'm rails to the, you know, all of these big records, but yet and still, people would still come back and try and focus on the negative word of being murder. And I'm like, damn, we just made a, a, a hot, great, classic record, but yet and still, people focus on the negative energy of the word murder. So, over the past year, you know, everyone knows pretty much all the stuff that, that's been going through in my life, so it, it allowed me to sit back and really reflect on a lot of things and, and, and stuff like that. Everyone knows about the, the meeting with the minister, which was a, a great meeting because he's such a, a great dude and he, he definitely puts your mind in a different perspective. One of, the things, one of the things that he said that really stuck to me in the interview and in the conversation, and he was like, we can't let the people dictate to us what we want to do. If we want to be good people, we need to just be good people. We can't let people 
try and bring you down or, 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 or worry about what other people think. You gotta do what's in your heart and you gotta do what's right and, and let them follow that. And when he said that, I was like, whoa, because you know what I'm saying? A lot of the things we've been doing has been for the people and then we get misunderstood. So over the past year with all of that stuff and, and then it brought me to this day where I was like, after the conversation with Farrakhan, it was something me, Russell, Leo, and we talked about, and I, I felt that it was a, a it was a great time to remove the word murder off of Murder Inc. and just be the Inc. for the sole purposes of hopefully everyone will focus on our talent and not on the word of murder. So when we come out with these great music and, 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 and really nice, hot music that's just hot. People will forget about any negative energy and maybe start trying to give us some of the kudos and props I think we deserve. So that's my main point in, in changing it, trying to get a positive vibe going and trying to get people to recognize the ink as talented individuals and not with all the negative bullshit that that, you, that sometimes is being said. So, the ink records. <laughs> Thank you, Irvin. We want you to know that there are millions of people around the world that support uh, your decision. The Hip Hop Summit Action Network, we stand with you 100% uh, in this decision and we pray to God that the people will receive your good words and your goodwill uh, as you spoke from your heart today. We now will entertain questions from members of the press, and I will ask you again, please stay focused, if you can, on the purpose of today's press conference, and we'll try to accommodate your questions. Would you raise your hand? I'll recognize you and just say uh, what uh, media source you're representing. Yes. Yeah, coming from Four Corners newspaper, hip-hop newspaper. Uh, the question I want to ask you is, when you said murder, the streets, the hip-hop community already know. The hip-hop community is synonymous with changing words. So murder, we know you murdering the mic, you murdering the game, dropping murderous beats. So we know. When you say they, tell us who you're talking about they don't know. Tell us who you're talking about. That's no. a good question. Yeah, you're exactly right. Because my people do know. Like, I didn't, I didn't really have to explain it to them, but one time, and they understood, because we always flip-flop words and in different meanings like that. So when, when I say they, I mean really the masses and stuff like that that have come down on us, different types of uh, publications and newspapers and stuff like that. It's really the people outside of the hip hop world that this is really about. The hip hop world really, they, they get it 100%. On, on, on what we're doing. But that's just always the case. It's the, you know, it's the people outside the hip-hop that don't get it. I want to add to what he said. We do come from a culture where bad means good. The other day I was watching the Reverend on O'Reilly and O'Reilly was screaming at him, run. And I just looked up at the Reverend and he told me, what do you think when they call you pimp you? The guy wears a collar all day. It never occurred to him that the guy was asking if he sold girls. But he never ever answered. You know, He just said thanks because he figured pimp you must be a term of endearment. <laughs> and it's after the Reverend when he gets that. So well, all of us know. And everybody in hip hop, not only in the projects, but the trailers and the mid middle America, every young person understands it. Even adults who pretend they don't know, know. But just because some of the adults who already are enemies of hip hop and who are already not interested in hearing some of the truth that comes from hip hop will use this against Earth. And so this choice now is a statement that he has higher goals than to shock them or fight with them. So there's, a, you know, you've seen, like he said, over the last year, he's, you know, a lot of additional problems have come, and they've used this as one of the reasons or one of the ways to, to, uh, to cause these problems. And so he's decided, you know, as he just decided, stated. Yes, state your name. Hi, Sandy Kenyon from 1010 Wins. Question for Ja Rule. I wonder if you could. Uh, Feel, if you feel like using this opportunity with, for some words of peace with 50 Cent. Oh, I'm not here to comment. Would you want to hear from Irv? Yeah, sure. Okay. 
Words of peace. Ja, ja and Ashanti just here to support their, their brother and their friend. You know, I didn't bring them. They, they're not here to uh, <coughs> answer any questions because I know it's probably a lot of questions I got for these two. So, uh, I mean, as far as that goes, is words of peace. Everything with 50 is 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 quiet. It, I, I think that the, the, the conversation with Farrakhan, I think it brought it to a nice place where we don't have to say anything more about him. Hopefully he won't say anything more about us. And maybe it could just die down. And I think that's where it's at right now. Thank you. Yes. Hi, from ABC Radio. Um, what will be the first official release on the new thing? Well, it's already one in stores. Ashanti's Christmas album was titled uh, The Ink. So it was it was something that me and Russell talked about a lot after the conversation with the minister about uh, about doing this press conference because I was already putting in motion of changing the ink. Uh, if her album's in stores now, her Christmas album, and if you look, it says the ink records. But, you know, we wanted to kind of get it out there so yeah, everyone uh -huh. knows. Hit it home. Russell, my guy, the well, golfer. Well, is, is there significance that it's a Christmas album? It's an album of peace like, and love? And it was just the next album. You know, if it, it could have been blood in my eye, and it could have been the ink. You know, it was just the next album. <laughs> but it is, it is a great, peaceful album, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get all the hands in the way. Yes. Uh, Michael Harris, uh, what was your reaction to the Eminem tapes, and do you think his written reply was a formal um, apology? Um. Uh, my reaction to the Eminem uh, tape, I'm going to first say that, you know, I love black women, man. I got a mother. I got five sisters. I'm the youngest of eight kids with five sisters. So I've been around black women all my life. So I'm a defender of black women. The Ink Records is defenders of black women. You can listen to our records, put it on me, down for you. Everything about the ink up here has a lot to do with a man and a woman riding for each other. From foolish to all our records when you listen to our music. So when you when you ask me that, I can't give them no pass. And the thing about it is what bothers me more, what bothers me more than the actual tape was his comment. And his comment was, I was dating an African-American female at the time, and uh, it went bad, and I made this thing. I was stupid and everything. Okay. Now, that's his comment. That's his words. <coughs> Now, what I'm saying to you is that them words to me is far worse than the actual tape. Because the, if he would have said, you know, I was freestyling. And, you know, I, I needed something to rhyme. I would have said lack itch, so I needed something to rhyme with that. So I said black bitch. You understand? Now, I didn't know what I was talking about. That would be a better excuse. It's still not excusable, but that would have been a better excuse. But the fact that you said you was with a black woman so you went into the studio and made a record on knowledge of this is what you think of black women, that they bitches, sluts, hoes, and whatever. And I ain't riding with that. I'm never going to ride with that. And yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, because, you know, people know we got problems with them. So I don't, you know, you ask me a question, I'm going to comment on it. But I haven't went far for anything because I know people may construe me as, ah, oh, they got a problem, you just beefing with them. Nah, I'm black. I got sisters, I got a mother, and I love black women. And we ride for them, just how they ride for us. So that's what it is. What I, what's also curious is where's C. Dolores Tucker? Where's Maxine Waters? Where's Dionne Warwick when Snoop and Pac was saying all this? They was riding on them, got death row kicked off of, of, of Atlantic. These is black women. Where they at? Where they at? It makes me question faith in my people, but I ain't never gonna question my faith in my people. You know, I'm riding, I ride for my people. And it's, I don't, I don't, I'm not, that's all I'm gonna say. Yes. 
content lyrical content is gonna stay the same like I mean I'm not gonna tell my artists if they say yo it's murder in a rhyme or whatever like that I'm not gonna say no nah, don't say that say the ink you know what I'm saying like <laughs> you know I'm not gonna say that I don't I don't I don't tell my artists to do anything they got lyrical freedom with me a hundred percent they say whatever they feel as long as it's hot so I'm not gonna tell them to, uh, to say you know start saying the inks you can still say it's murder like, I wanted to bring up a point, like, you know, we go like this. It's a hip-hop thing. Everyone thinks because we do it, Murder Rank, Irv Gotti, that we gang-banging or something like that. What's this? The Rock! You understand? Bad Boy, they starting to do their little sign like this. It looks a little weird, but I see Diddy throwing his shit up. You know what I'm saying? So you got Diddy, you got West Side Connection, they throw that. It's a hip-hop thing. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it, it seems like with me, because of that word murder, anything that they could do negative, they would just... You know what I'm saying? They, oh, you throwing up signs and this gang signs and it's, it's just a hip hop thing. It's a hip hop thing. 